as I've alluded to in the past, I can't stand comic book superheroes anymore. I have reached peak burnout on them. They just really annoy me now. Almost as much as I was annoyed at the minions when you still saw them everywhere. With typical comic books, it's just like, oh, I have this power, or I have special technology. So I'm going to give myself a corny name, or it's going to be given to me for corny reasons, and I'm going to have someone make me a really gaudy-looking costume that's really intricate that has a lot of spandex in it. You know, it'll, it'll either be made by someone in the story, or it'll just sort of magically appear, because that's what can happen in a comic book world. Because you must wear a special superhero costume if you're going to have superpowers. And you need to have a proper set of virtues. Unless you're the bad guy, and then, well, then you have a proper set of evil virtues for evil people. And so I, I'm going to fight against evil and do a bunch of virtue signaling. It's a WWE throwdown and WWE worthy drama on the wrestling floor. Each person having a mic describing the turmoil and, 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 and hardship and so much virtue. So dramatic. But with a hundred million dollars in production, choreography, and overpaid actors. I mean, apparently I'm supposed to love any story that's good versus evil if it has a lot of refined production and it has diversity and it says the right kind of virtue signaling. Otherwise, apparently I'm shallow, irrational, and I might even be something that ends with ist or phobic, apparently. And to those of you who think that stupid titles and this necessity for wearing stupid-looking costumes shouldn't matter as to what I like in a movie, you know, where you say, well, if you wear it, it's a costume, and I should stop being so petty and shallow, let me introduce you to a hypothetical movie. Imagine 007, but James Bond is always wearing either a maid's uniform or a bright fluorescent magenta dress with huge shoulder pads and goes by the name Poochie Wamba. And everyone just treats him the same way as they always have, except that they now call him Poochie Wamba. Yeah, absurd, isn't it? Yeah, I rest my case. And sure, technically, if you wear it, it's a costume, sure. But some costumes are ridiculous and gaudy. Some costumes are inappropriate for the situation. It's silly to think that if someone were to actually get superpowers in real life, that they seriously have to make themselves look like a stereotypical superhero. That they need to look similar to the Power Rangers or Superman or Spider-Man. That they have to wear a gaudy costume. That it's a prerequisite somehow for having, you know, when you get superpowers. It's stupid as far as I'm concerned. It only makes sense in a comic book world, which is an absurd world I don't really care about unless it's not focusing on superheroes. Can you imagine if on Donnie Darko, he decided to call himself Time Man and had a costume made that looked like a bunch of timepieces? <laughs> it's absurd. You know, it would completely ruin the movie. That would be the Marvel version of Donnie Darko. But, you know, I'm supposed to accept that kind of absurdity when it comes to superhero movies and stories. And if I don't accept it and I don't like it, apparently I'm shallow and irrational. And just a little rant about fashion. Some styles, some fashions, look like shit. It doesn't matter how creative it is, some styles look like shit. They're very, very unflattering. And don't get me wrong, I think it's really cool how visually expressive people can be now. But some colors just generally look like shit against human skin tones. Though I imagine that at some point in the future, people will start getting their skin tinted in unusual colors in a similar way that people get spray-on tans now. Granted, though, even without the skin tinting, with the right haircut, with the right matching outfit, and the right complementing makeup, even fluorescent green hair can be made to look all right. The biggest problem with so many of these styles and so many of these colors and, and this fashion that you're seeing are the attitudes that are so often associated with them. It's not like the alternatively dressed and people with alternative hair colors in the 1990s. 
That's for damn sure. Fashion-wise, right now we're living in a time where when we look back 10 years from now, we're going to look back at it like we do now, uh, uh, the 1970s. It's actually much worse than the 1970s. We just don't know it yet. We don't realize it yet. Yes, people are trying to be expressive in their fashion, but some of it is hideous. So many young people have no concept of the color wheel. They don't even know what complementary or contrasting colors are. It's just completely random looking sometimes. Someone who has pinkish kind of skin with neon green eyeshadow, orange and yellow hair in an indistinct style except for the fact that it's shaved on the sides, tomato red lipstick, blue oversized glasses, an aqua top with occasional off-white stripes that make it look like it's kind of dirty, moss green pants with an ugly logo plastered all over it haphazardly, making them look more like pajamas, ugly fluorescent magenta shoes, and a lavender mesh vest. And yes, I've seen fashion atrocities as bad as that. It's like people are trying to look as bad as possible, and I really don't completely get it. It's like we've completely abandoned the reason why we have fashion in the first place. I mean, even when I did the purple beard thing, you know, I tried to make sure everything was matching. I try to make sure I wear outfits that matched it, you know? I, I, I tried to go with something, but I'm just... It, it's so weird right now. But then again, I mean, going with all these new colors is somewhat new for a lot of people. So, I mean, there's going to be a period where uh, the experiments are failures, and we realize that later, but still. I mean, I've seen some really, really cool, you know, blue and purple hair. I mean, blues to purples are my favorite colors. And when someone does it right, I mean, it, it can be really, really pretty. But, you know, normally fashion has existed to try to make people look good. You know, in, in the past five or so years, it just seems to have changed into something else. The mindset seems to be that the louder and more obnoxious and ugly it is, the better. I guess the 1970s had a little bit of that going on. I mean, I, I mean, just look at, look at the leisure suits, look at just some of this, just, oh my goodness, what were we thinking in the 1970s, right? And, uh, and then, of course, when you went into the 1980s, you know, you had the, uh, things that looked ripped up and uh, uh, you, you, you look at Madonna's fashion from the period, you know, but that's not, you, you can still look back at that and say, hey, that looked, that's, that's, that had, that was dated, but it still looked good kind of, right? But you couldn't really say that about, about some of the stuff in the seventies. And, and I think some of the stuff we're seeing right now is the same way We're we're just, yeah, we're not going to be able to look back and say, hey, that looked great. No, we're going to look back and go, oh, right? So, yeah, right now, you know, yeah, maybe it's a kind of a repeat of some of the, the mindset from the 70s, but on overdrive and with a whole new set of colors and textures. But, yeah, we're going to look back in 10 years and, and, and go, what, what the fuck? What? what? Well, if we, we make it 10 more years anyway. How's this? Try to look around online or, or anywhere for plastic glasses frames that aren't huge. Besides just liking smaller glasses frames, some of the reason why I wear these small frames that probably look like uh, something that was a prop in an 1800s set or something, or something from Harry Potter or something, it's to go against the current trends. Trends that I think look kind of ridiculous. Granted, maybe some people think these look ridiculous, and that's fair, you know. It's all a matter of perspective, I suppose. But just think about how often in the past few years you have seen people wearing glasses that are so big and oversized that they cover someone's eyebrows. How about Anderson Cooper's glasses? Yeah, I look forward to seeing plastic glasses frames that are smaller, that are significantly smaller. I'd say that we might start seeing that in two years, but it'll probably be more like five. Anyway, I digress. Yes, I get that stories of good versus evil and heroes versus tyrants are as old as our recorded history. Yes, I fully get that. 
That doesn't mean I have to like every iteration of this type of story. I can dislike the modern comic book superhero without disliking all of the other kinds of iterations of good versus evil plots. Saying otherwise is like someone telling you that you can't rationally criticize metal without also criticizing rock because metal comes from rock. And you'd also have to criticize blues and so on. So you have to criticize all of those styles if you criticize metal. Because, you know, you're irrational and shallow if you say you hate metal without saying you hate all the styles that led up to it. Yeah, that's a crock of shit, and I don't accept that kind of argument in any context. So yeah, with very rare exception, I'm just not into the comic book superhero stories. It's just not my cup of tea. I think the popular comic book superheroes are corny, cheesy, gaudy, hokey. It's like the Power Rangers, but geared towards teenagers instead of geared towards six-year-olds. And no, not all comic books and graphic novels are geared towards kids or teenagers. The ones that are popular, that you see in so many movies that are taking place in those universes, usually Marvel and DC universes, you know, the large majority of them are geared towards kids and teenagers. You know, with the hope that some of the adults that used to like them as children will still want to look at this stuff out of nostalgia. Though, I mean, in some cases, some of these movies are made to really, really try to bank on nostalgia and try to make people's nostalgia feel more real and approachable. Ra you know, rather than being just silly and laughable nostalgia that uh, we sometimes enjoy. And the truth is, no matter how much realism they try to put into these productions, this is laughable to those who are seeing it now who were never introduced to the, these things as kids and laughable to the adults that aren't still trying to hold on to this childlike good versus evil mindset about the world. Unfortunately, it's very easy to apply that same type of good versus evil mindset to one's political adversaries. It's kind of funny how we hold on to things like good versus evil, even if we tell ourselves that we don't believe in that sort of thing. I still have leftovers from my religious upbringing that are really, really hard to get rid of. But the last thing I want to do is replace that religious upbringing with corporate virtue signaling. It's easy to transfer a problem from one place to another. I'd rather work at getting rid of the problem. It would seem that it makes some people very upset when I tear down something that people are still trying to hold on to. So nostalgia is a big thing regardless. I'm not trying to take that away from anyone. But I am trying to get people to look at their nostalgia grab honestly. Stop pretending that comic book superheroes are geared for adults. Or that there's some deep meaning behind them. Or that there's some sort of virtue in them that we haven't heard a million times. Honestly, I've run across far too many people who treat Marvel like a religion. They can't imagine a rational person disliking them. And they'll use circular reasoning. They'll say that I can't rationally dislike comic book superheroes without disliking all the stories that deal with good versus evil. And they'll dish out personal insults. Try to be as nasty as they possibly can. And to be fair, you know, as time goes on, I have less and less liked the kinds of stories that are the good versus evil. I, I just don't like them much anymore. They don't reflect reality. That's just not how things work. You know, those kinds of stories verge on religious teachings too much, in my opinion. Unless, you know, in our entertainment, we are trying to bring to light the things that are detrimental, or you could say are evil in our society, and mindsets that make people do awful things, and the reasons why people get into those mindsets that make them do awful things, then I see no reason to focus on good versus evil especially not in such a storybook kind of fashion. I don't see what we're supposed to gain from that, other than something that you'd expect from a children's storybook. And I'm an adult, so I'll pass on the mythological bullshit. Movies like Falling Down, Taxi Driver, and Joker show us the reasons why people get into the mindsets where they do awful things. 
how three-dimensional actual humans might respond to situations, how otherwise good people end up snapping. Also, in one case, you know, how someone, even after they see so many awful things and are around people doing so many awful things, they still want to try to do the right thing in the end. And yes, I realize that Joker is in the DC Universe, but it could have been in any universe and still been a great standalone story. It wasn't a superhero plot. Those types of movies are important for people to watch, but those are like the uncomfortable conversations that people want to avoid having. They'd rather watch something that's all storybook virtue and amusement park ride, and no actual substance, or at most, the substance of an expensive WWE event. And yes, I totally get that people want something that makes them feel good, and that some people find solace in comic book superhero movies. And that's fine. And I understand that I am tearing down something that brings people joy. It makes people feel like a kid again. But if I want to see a feel-good movie, there are plenty of heartwarming movies to choose from. This is why I can't really feel too sorry for the people that are just so distraught when I, when I make fun of comic book superhero movies. I mean, some people are acting like religious people do when someone makes fun of the Bible. It's just weird. I can't imagine having such allegiance to a corporate piece of entertainment. I'm fine with there being a hero. I'm fine with there being superpowers. I'm not fine with the popular comic book formulas for superheroes. It's degrading to one's intelligence, if you're an adult anyway. We need to move on from these popular comic book characters and formulas. Just like I think we need to move on from 007 and Doctor Who and a number of popular franchises that have went on for too long. Let them be a part of our nostalgia. Don't try to update something to current times that can't really be updated anymore. Times have changed too much. As someone mentioned in the comments on my last video, even Firestarter doesn't really make that much sense it given current times. Since nowadays, the parents would have just homeschooled their kids. So, you know, even doing a movie based on a 1980 novel isn't necessarily the best idea. In this case, I think it worked all right, though. I mean, from, from the previews, it looks like it's going to be an okay film. You know, I mean, the, the original uh, Firestarter movie was, yeah, it was okay. I mean, but I, I think they could do better, and we'll see if they do better, right? I want good sci-fi movies, not more virtuous comic book good versus evil stuff. Come up with something that doesn't have these tired old comic book formulas. I wish these studios would go with some more recent sci-fi novels. Seriously. Again, we live in a different time. Stop ruining nostalgia for half the fans and creating religious people out of the other half. But the studios want money, so that's what they're going to get. Also, comic books and graphic novels are not classic literature. They're, they're called graphic novels for a reason. They're not just called novels. They're an art form. They tell stories in certain ways because of the medium. And let's be clear, the vast majority of even the graphic novels that actually are geared for adults, or they, they say they are, or they're supposed to be, will be fully understood by teenagers. There's nothing particularly so adult in these, in these graphic novels that it's going to go over the heads of teenagers. I mean, with very rare exception. Another thing to consider is that graphic novels can only contain so much dialogue before it becomes visually unappealing. And they don't, they don't want things to be visually unappealing. I mean, you don't, you don't want to be the entire, you know, page filled with text. You know, that's, that's unappealing, so they, they, don't, they don't do that. The dialogue is designed to be short and to the point. People have to wear their virtues on their sleeves and state those virtues bluntly. It's just part of the format. It's like the dialogue on a number of really old movies where you can picture that uh, mid-Atlantic accent, right? And in a comic book or graphic novel, you know, if something is really dark and violent, then sure, that's, that might not be designed for teenagers and kids, but teenagers and kids are going to be the ones that want to see it the most, and they're going to be the ones that appreciate it the most. They're going to be the ones that are going to say, hey, that's badass. 
the most or whatever or whatever the new vocabulary they use now. There are plenty of types of entertainment that I enjoy that are not geared towards adults, especially when it comes to animated productions. Man, I I love the Cartoon Network from the 1990s. Love it. Just just love it. But you know, more recently, um, you know, sometimes Pixar and DreamWorks, I mean, they they put out some things that I like, but they they have this tendency to make everything just so bouncy and 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 just over animated in this in this way that seems like they're trying to uh target uh you know preschoolers or something right you know where it looks like everything's made out of this uh a blob of jelly or something and and it kind of goes into these shapes but you could you could like stretch it or or whatever no matter what it looks like no matter what it's made out of it looks like you could stretch it right just kind of bouncy and stretchy and and uh that that's always been kind of weird but uh you know and i'm really not a fan of the minions but you know i enjoyed ratatouille i enjoyed the shrek movies i enjoyed the uh the toy story movies there's a number of them that i enjoyed and most of those are primarily geared towards kids and teenagers you know that that sort of age range and and the adults will like it just because it's generally entertaining right and they'll they'll shove a few things in in there here and there and uh that that maybe it might be a reference that only older people will get some sort of nostalgic reference of some sort and 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 that's fine right but it's still not primarily geared towards adults it, it, people accept the notion that these movies are 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 family and they're 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 geared the, the primary audience are young people. Nobody gets in all pissy over someone saying that. But boy do some people get bent out of shape when I suggest that uh comic book superheroes are designed for teenagers and kids. They just blow their tops. I still like watching a lot of old cartoons, mostly for nostalgic purposes, but still, I, I still enjoy, I, I, I've got a pretty big collection of uh, files, but you know, when I really want to look at it, some of them were just awful, actually. I mean, I, I love uh, the, the old Scooby-Doo, you know, like from 1969 to what was it, 1976, uh, in that range. You know, I, I loved those Scooby-Doo's, but uh, man, were they, were they poor animation, and 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 it was the same plot over and over again, pretty much. You know, but uh, I still enjoyed them back then, and I still like watching them occasionally now. You know, nostalgia, but whatever. I liked The Incredibles because, I mean. The main thing that was great about it is it was making fun of all these stupid things about superheroes. Especially the, the costumes and the names. It blatantly showed how absurd the whole thing is. And I don't think that could have really been done in live action and worked. When something is in animated form, they can get away with so many things that just don't translate to live action very well. Think about when Seth MacFarlane hosted an awards show and he tried to bring Family Guy humor to live action and it was just a total fail. There's so much more you can get away with in animation. I loved the Harry Potter movies until so many channels started, uh, TV channels started doing marathons on Harry Potter and it, you, could, you couldn't get away from it. And it's like, ah, I got burned out. But Harry Potter was not designed for adults. The books were considered a middle grade read, which according to several sources that I looked up encompasses 8 to 12 year olds. Sure, adults can enjoy it, and many do enjoy it. I enjoyed it, and it did have some very dark moments. But it still wasn't designed for adults, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with liking things designed for kids, you know? So j just, just don't get all pissy if someone says that something that you enjoy was designed for teenagers. Okay, you should just be like, okay, so what? That's the attitude that you should have about it. But if you get all pissy, there's, there's something wrong here, man. But it just isn't possible for me to be any more burned out than I am on the whole comic book superhero. It's so pervasive, especially in the LGBT community. Marvel and Disney movies, I, I don't know why they're so popular in the LGBT community. So as a gay man, it's like some sort of requirement for me to know so much about these things and be excited about these things.
So I pretty much have to sit on my hands when those subjects come around when I'm in the community. If there was ever a company I would love to see go down, it's Disney. I can't stand what they've become, but at the same time, I mean, they don't have a very good history either. They've been pushing some bad messaging from the start. From Happy Slaves in Song of the South, to, you know, Jim Crow, to black people playing monkeys, singing about how they'd really, really love to be human, you know, in the Jungle Book. To the way they changed the purpose of so many stories, like The Little Mermaid, where instead of teaching important lessons, it teaches that if you dream big enough, it will come true. Not that if you work hard enough, you'll meet your goals. No, 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 no. If you dream big enough, it's the notion that if you believe something enough and you just wish it to be, it'll happen. It's false messaging. It actually hurts kids in the long run. Because as they get older, and it won't take that long, they'll quickly realize that those messages were just complete bullshit. And depression will sink in, and many of those people will eventually go on medications. As cheap of animation as Scooby-Doo was, at least it taught that the things that you're scared of are probably not actually as scary as you think they are. Anyway, as I've said many times in this video, I just can't stand the standard formula comic book superhero anymore. No amount of diversification of the cast members or the storyline will make me want to see it more. Though, as I think about it, perhaps if they combined RuPaul's Drag Race with another Avengers movie, I might just want to see it just for the cringe factor. Look, if you enjoy the comic book superhero stuff, hey, have at it, enjoy it. But don't tell me I'm irrational, shallow, or a bad person just because I'm not into it. If you don't like my reasons, you're free to disagree. Have a joy, joy day!